Hey everybody, Nikki here. This is my first video that I'll do in English. So for those of you who don't know, all of my videos will be in English from now on. Anyway, welcome to my new series called Top 10 Movie Mistakes. In these videos, I'll point out the mistakes that I've found in blockbuster movies. I work as an editor and a VFX artist for a living. So I guess I have a well-trained eye to spot these things. There are already many websites that point out the mistakes in movies and I'm not gonna make videos about what other people have already discovered. That wouldn't be fun. Uh, these are the mistakes that I've found myself. Now, some of the mistakes might already have been posted elsewhere, but I'm pretty sure that a lot of them aren't. I'm only going to focus on the mistakes in big blockbuster movies because they are the ones considered by many to be perfect movies thus making it more challenging and fun to spot these mistakes. And no movie is ever perfect. And I think it's quite fun to spot movie mistakes, just like it's fun for some people to find glitches in video games. Now, the most common mistake to be found in a movie is called continuity mistake, which means that a scarf might hang a little differently between shots, or hair might look different, or the lighting, or whatever. Um, I find those types of mistakes pretty boring because of course there's going to be minor, minor changes between shots. Unless a person suddenly wears a completely different jacket, I don't find it interesting. Um, I guess my favorite kind of mistake is when they accidentally left a crew member in the final picture or crew equipment. Anyway, let's dive into it. These are the top 10 movie mistakes in The Lord of the Rings. The Lord of the Rings movies are some of my all-time favorite movies, and with 12 hours of runtime, of course there's going to be problems here and there. Some of the mistakes are big, and some of them are just nitpicking. Number 10. The huge tree in Lothlorien. When the Fellowship departs from Lothlorien, we see a huge tree at the lake. The tree was built on location and stood 6 meters high. Unfortunately, you can clearly see where the tree ends in one of the white shots. There is another white shot where the rest of the tree was extended with CGI. So why didn't they fix the other white shot as well? Number 9. The Green Dragon White Shots. In the first movie, The Fellowship of the Ring, we get introduced to Hobbiton. And there is a white shot of the end called the Green Dragon. Notice the guy with the lantern on the bridge, and the two horses and the people entering the inn. Okay, in the third movie, The Return of the King, when the four hobbits return to Hobbiton, there is another white shot of the Green Dragon. Obviously, the shot looks different, since it's daytime, and the other shot from the first movie was nighttime. But how come the same stupid guy with the lantern is crossing the bridge? The two horses are still there, and the exact same people wearing the same clothes are again entering the inn. And this is supposed to be like a year later in the story, but apparently the people People in Hobbiton have the same daily routines and only one set of clothes. But seriously, my guess is that they did different takes for this shot at both daylight and nighttime, and the extras was probably instructed to do the same thing over and over again. Number 8. Edoras in Reverse. In The Return of the King, there is a shot of Edoras zooming in on the Golden Hall. It was shot from a helicopter, and apparently the shot was eventually reversed. They obviously wanted the shot to zoom in instead of zooming out. It looks good, but unfortunately there are chimneys in the shot that are now sucking the smoke. I don't know why they didn't notice this. It really looks stupid once you notice it. Well, maybe those are not supposed to be chimneys at all. It might be smoke sucking devices. Number 7. Legolas Blue Eyes. The eye color of Legolas is blue, but the actor playing him, Orlando Bloom, has brown eyes, so he had to wear blue contact lenses while filming. But occasionally, the contact lenses caused him problems so he couldn't wear them, which meant that his brown eyes had to be colored blue with the use of CGI, like in this scene. But sometimes you can clearly see Legolas having brown eyes. In most cases, it is brief and you need eagle eyes to spot it, so that's probably why they didn't bother fixing it in those cases. But then there's a scene like this from The Return of the King when Aragorn, Gimli and Legolas exit the mountain. What the hell? He has brown eyes in a close-up shot, lasting quite long. Why wasn't this fixed with CGI? Was there no more money left? Or did they think nobody would notice? I mean, with all the detail and care put into these movies, this really doesn't make sense. I'm pretty sure that this shot would take less than 10 minutes to fix. Let's see how fast I can fix it. Okay, I'm taking this shot into After Effects. Tracking the eyes, adjusting the eye color. There, five minutes of work. Number six, the shore of Nenhethal. When the Fellowship sails to the shore at the Ninhethal Lake, then the location is real, but the opposite shore was digitally altered to look like a rock formation. 
After the battle in the forest, we then see Frodo stand alone at the shore preparing to go to Mordor alone. Only this time the opposite shore isn't digitally altered. It looks completely different. It's just a green hill. This is what the real location looks like by the way. I know because I've been on the location. I've made a whole video where I visit all the filming locations of The Lord of the Rings. But why didn't they digitally alter the opposite shore for this scene when they went through the trouble altering it for the scene earlier? Very weird. Number 5. Motion tracking. To add the digital effects to a moving shot, the visual effects artists have to track the shot. Where to digital did an amazing job on these movies, but still there are some minor mistakes to nitpick. One example is this aerial shot of Edoras. Only the top buildings were really there, so the rest of the houses and the perimeter wall was digitally added. It looks great, and it must have been a difficult shot to track, but if you look closely at the wall in the right corner, the wall isn't properly locked onto the shot. It kind of looks like it's floating on the cliff. There is another aerial shot of Edoras later in the movie, and the same part of the wall is poorly locked onto the shot as well. Look at this, it's floating in the sky this time! Number 4. Party field changes. In the first movie, Bilbo is giving a speech at his birthday party. Take a look at the scene. There's a birthday cake, Bilbo is standing on a barrel between other barrels, there's a lot of people all sitting around tables. Bilbo then puts on the ring to become invisible and runs to Bag End. Then it cuts to this wide shot. Take a good look. People are running around worried that Bilbo has disappeared. But where's the birthday cake and the barrels? And where's all the tables? Even half the people are gone. The party was actually filmed inside a studio and this wide shot was shot outside on the Hobbiton set. So it's two different locations and obviously they didn't think much about making them match. Number 3. Visible stunt doubles. For action scenes a stunt double is often required and the filmmakers do everything they can to hide the stunt double. But sometimes they are quite visible and I think it's quite fun to notice it. Like this scene, when Arwen is fleeing from the ring wraiths. Only the close-ups are the real actor. The actual footage of Arwen riding in high speed is a stunt double. And a couple of times the stunt double is quite visible. Who's this? The most funny example of a visible stunt double is in the end of the two towers. When the battle of Helm's Deep is over, then Eoma's stunt double is very visible to the left. I don't know why they left him in the final picture, but Peter Jackson jokes about it in the commentary track. Well, he's Aemir's double. And I, and I think we were going to put the uh, AME's head on him at some stage and never got round to it. But now he just says he's a generic Rohan rider. Right. He's the fourth lieutenant of the second company, <laughs> B division of the Mark. I see. His, his name's George. Number two. The Rivendell changes. When I watch the Rivendell scenes, I think it's hard to understand where everything is placed. And for good reason, things constantly change throughout the three movies. Rivendell was created using a model for white shots, real footage of waterfalls, and the shots with the actors was filmed in a studio and in a park in New Zealand on a Rivendell set. I get that it's hard to get all the geography correct when you're putting all these elements together, but they definitely made some big mistakes. Let's have a look at some of them. This is a wide shot of the Fellowship leaving Rivendell in the first movie. It's a beautiful shot. It's mostly a model. Now look what the same part of Rivendell looks like in the second movie. Um, where's the bridge seen in the first movie? And the waterfalls beneath it? Well, maybe Elrond had Rivendell rebuild between the two movies. But how the hell did he move the mountains around? They look completely different. Even all the trees and the plants are moved around. There is now a huge tree in the foreground at the bridge. Did 50 years pass by between the two movies? This is the same part of Rivendell in the third movie. Now the huge tree is gone again. Hmm, maybe Elrond cut it down. By the way, in the first movie, the Fellowship leaves Rivendell through an archway and then they cross the bridge. The archway was part of the Rivendell set built in the park, but the archway is never to be found in the white shots. Where is it? It must be this archway, right? But it looks completely different. Or is there more than one archway in Rivendell? Well, in the third movie when Arwen returns to Rivendell, she crosses the usual bridge and the archway looks like this now, just like in the white shots. What the hell? The White Shots was created using a model and they probably didn't think about making the same archway as the real one built in the park. Another example of Rivendell changing is the Council of Elrond scene. The surroundings change instantly in this example. Take a look at this White Shot. It all looks good. It's a mixture of a real set in a studio and a model. This is Gandalf and Frodo from the back by the way. Now look when the camera angle changes and we see them from the front. Um, now there are stairs leading to a bridge all of a sudden. And there are statues. Where were those in the white shot? 
and what happened to the nice and open space scene in the white shot. In the rest of the scene there are trees and rock formations in the background. Number 1. Visible Strings and Visible Crew Member In the prologue of the first movie, when Sauron attacks the Alliance, you can clearly see wires pulling the stun guys away. I wonder why these weren't removed with CGI. I think they are too visible. Now the most funny mistake, which is in the same scene, is in this shot of Elrond fighting an orc. If you look closely in the background, you can see a guy in a blue boiler suit wearing a white hard hat. Um, this is really awesome to have in the middle of an epic battle. I guess he's a safety guy or something. I wonder if anybody else have noticed this. He's only visible for 9 frames, so you need to pause the movie to really notice it. Yep, that was the top 10 movie mistakes. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what movie I should take a look at next time. Until then, see ya! By the way, I know this is really pushing the nitpicking, but I didn't know that dental fillings existed in Middle-earth.